The final award tonight is for the International Wine Challenge Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, the winner of our Lifetime Achievement Award is a great lover of wine. His life was changed while an undergraduate at Cambridge by two glasses of red burgundy at a meeting of the University Wine and Food Society. One was ordinary, the other magical. This enthusiasm was heightened in 1961 when he tasted the 15, yes, you heard correctly, 1540 Steinwein from the Würzburger Stein Vineyard in Franconia. He joined Condé Nast Publications in 1960 and started work on Vogue and House and Garden. In 1962, he became editor of Wine and Food magazine and started to write the column on wine in the Sunday Times. In 1967, he became the Sunday Times' travel editor, then editor of Queen magazine the following year. He's published many books about wine, among which are his magnificent introduction to the subject, Wine in 1966, the World Atlas of Wine in 1971, which was recognized by the governing body of French wine, the INAO, as the first really serious mapping of the world's wine regions, and the story of wine in 1989, accompanied by a 13-part TV program. His pocketbook of wine has been an annual guide and stocking filler for the last 37 years. He has an equal passion for trees. The International Book of Trees was his first book on the subject, recently revised in 2010 as Trees, A Lifetime's Journey Through Forests, Woods, and Gardens. He is editorial director for the Royal Horticultural Society's journal, The Garden, in which he has written the monthly column Trad's Diary also for 37 years. In the commercial world of wine, he has been president of the Sunday Times Wine Club since 1973. He was a director of Chateau Latour from 1986 to 2001 and co-founder of the Royal Tokai Wine Company in 1990. In 1986, he created a collection of wine glasses and other wine-related items with a shop in St. James's and a thriving market in the Far East. Honors he has won include Decanter's Man of the Year in 1995, Officer in the French Ordre National du Mérite Agricole in 2004, and an OBE in 2007 for services to winemaking and horticulture. His charm and wit are well known in the wine trade. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the winner of the 2013 IWC's Lifetime Achievement Award, Hugh Johnson. She's up on Well, thank you all. They had to find somebody who'd been around for a bit, I know. <laughs> it is thrilling to be here, and it is thrilling to be part of this astonishing business, industry, call it what you will, which has become, I could almost say, in my time. Uh, it was a much more modest thing in... 1960, so that's 53 years ago, when I wrote my first wine article, which was in Vogue, it was the Christmas issue of 1960, and you'll never guess what I wrote about, what to drink with turkey. <laughs> Tip four, beginning wine writers. People always want to know, and it doesn't matter a damn. <laughs> But there's many, many people I should really want to thank for my presence on this stage tonight. Um, a lot of them are here in the room. I've got a wonderful caucus over here with the Laceways gang, who I love, they're a marvelous gang, and we work together closely. I thoroughly enjoy it. And that started, oh God, in 1975? It can't be true. The, um, my publishers and all that. I mean, there's a great long list, but consider yourself thoroughly and warmly thanked because nobody does this thing uh, without being egged on to it, let's put it that way. We all start in a small way, and um, God knows a, a, an article can lead to a book and on, 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 on you go. But I think that here I learn that the writer 
who lives in an ivory tower. It's a lonely job, writing. You sit at your desk and you scribble away and you think, will anyone be interested in reading this? And then you come here and it wouldn't have been like this 40, let alone 50 years ago. You find there's a great booming, bustling, energetic, fantastic industry going on. And this is like, you know, but people appearing here are like rock stars. Uh, I can't hear anything above the, the rock that's going on. But it's marvelous. This is success. It's incredible success. And we, all of us, have done this together. We have made wine something that everybody wants or wants to know about or confesses they don't know about. But in any case, it is relevant, it is current, it is terrific. And by God, it's worth it because it is so marvelous. I always want to know what is under every cork, what is behind every label, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's all about enthusiasm and it's all about your senses and about being prepared to give a moment's thought to what's going on in your nostrils and in your mouth and in your throat. No good just swigging, it's worth more than that. Now my favorite, there, there is a perfect tasting note. We all struggle with the traces of apricot and almonds and cherries and keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, but there once was a perfect tasting note. And this is a story that I got from my old mate, Len Evans, who I still celebrate very, very often. Uh, he would have loved this um, semillon we had here tonight. He would have just loved it, right up his street. Subtle, nothing obvious. So he tells this story of two swagmen, is that the correct term? Any Australian here can correct me? <laughs> who are wandering about in the bush, as swagmen do. And they bump into each other, probably under a coolibar tree, probably by a whatever it is hole where they will meet. And um, Bruce says to Bazza, hey, you got a bottle of wine now? Yeah, I got a bottle of wine now. Yeah. Can we have a taste? Okay, mate, yeah. Bruce hand, hands Bazza the wine bottle, or the other way round, and indeed he gives the top of the bottle a jolly good wipe <laughs> before he takes a slug. But then he says, well, Bruce says, what do you think of it? He says, just right. Just right? What do you mean just right? He says, well, if it had been any better, you wouldn't have given it to me. If it hadn't been any worse, I couldn't have drunk it. <laughs> there is your perfect tasting note, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> With which I simply say this is a tremendous honor. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to see our industry in such fantastic shape and Keep going and let's go for it. Let's grow and have a lot of fun in the process. Thank you all. In, in, in just a few seconds, how can you summarize what it means to both win this award and also how do you feel the wine business has moved on since you started? Well, it's amazing for anybody to be awarded or paid indeed for doing what they love to do anyway. I mean, most people buy wine uh, if they can afford it and love it and share it with their friends. But they don't expect to be paid for loving it. But somehow or other, I hit gold early on in my career. And uh, somehow what I wrote appealed to people. I don't know, you could call it the common touch in a way. And, uh, and that's, that's it. And, and I can't connect that directly with the incredible current success of the industry except that it is just a glorious thing. I mean, wine reveals itself as one of the great gifts of nature. I mean, there is such concentrated 
It's a, it's a natural product that expresses where it comes from, when it was made, who made it. it there's nothing else in our lives that does what wine does. And of course, it cheers you up. If you are able to tell one thing to the people watching this video, to keep the love of wine and the ship on course for the next 20, 30 years, what would it be? Those of us who really love wine, love it, I think, because we, we, un we get some understanding out of it. You can't love wine just by taking a slur. I mean, I love beer too. When I drink beer, I fill my throat with a great big swallow and I love it and I'm very happy about that. When I taste wine, I, I, I actually I engage my brain as well. I think that's the great thing. You actually put brain into gear and then you taste the wine and it tells you, it gives you messages. They may be you know, unpleasant messages, that's possible too but it might be thrilling in a way that you then have to try to pin down. So, I mean, the word intellectual is pretty horrific to most people, but wine is an intellectual as well as a physical pleasure, and you shouldn't underestimate that, and it doesn't start at sort of high prices. It starts being interesting and worth thinking about at, let's say, to be ambitious, $7.99 a bottle, 